This spring, Neo Metals turned heads when it announced that it signed a joint venture with Mercedes-Benz. Chris Reed is the Managing Director and CEO of Neo Metals. Chris, welcome to Kiko. Thank you very much, Michael. My pleasure to be here. I was going to do an introduction, but I think we should hear it from you. What does Neo Metals do? So Neo Metals is uh, an emerging battery materials producer. Essentially, what we're doing is, you know, we're commercializing some innovative processing technologies uh, in the battery materials space. You know, we've got a long history in lithium when in 2009 developed the Mount Marion lithium mine into the world's second largest source of feedstock, moved further down stream you know right to the other end from upstream mining to downstream recycling and then we're in filling the gaps talk about the significance of the mercedes-benz deal yeah look i think um you know with with any technology people you know always have concerns you know uh, how good is it uh you know do you have a few moats around it to defend your ip all of that sort of stuff and so mercedes-benz as a third-party endorsement of our technology you know couldn't be stronger so you know it was about 16 months in the making and uh, as you'd expect they uh, they are very thorough how do you win a deal like that what are some of the bottom line metrics chris yeah, so look, you know, the car makers are becoming EV makers. You know, they're, they're sort of copying Elon and wanting to pr produce their own cells and they're even reaching up, like forward up into the upstream arena. Um, and so for recycling, you know, I think our process, we've been public where a lot of others have been private and then some have done go public transactions. The The market has been able to see the uh, development of our technology. We've reported scoping studies and pre-feasibility studies and test work results. And, uh, you know, really we're, we're driven, one, by making it sustainable. So, you know, our, our process, we generate very little uh, off gases, um, any water is recyclable and our, our tailings product by design is ammonium sulfate or a fertiliser. And for that that uh, flow sheet, we were, so, you know, we were finalists in the German National Sustainability Award. We didn't win, but we made it to the last seven. And, and those along that way, um, everyone gets comfortable. One with, you know, uh, the safety, the sustainability, the recovery. So they're, they're future proof against the, the future European battery regs. We, we exceed all of them. Um, and the product purity so that they can use the nickel cobalt lithium back in the production of, of new cells. And we've actually uh, in the process of doing that now. So, you know, products out of our plant have gone back to Mercedes cathode maker for generating new cells. I want to go back a bit, uh, Chris, uh, just talking about uh, the evolution of the company, because you say that you've been in the space for a long time. Uh, you were uh, upstream, uh, you were involved with lithium, and now you've come downstream. Uh, why the pivot? Why the change? Yeah, so originally we uh, started out, I founded the company 20 odd years ago with my father uh, and we developed uh, gold mines. Um, and then we had a, it was just a chance meeting in Germany uh, with Mercedes Benz and uh, Johnson Controls. I learned about what was going to happen in 2008 with the electrification of transport. They told me to go and find lithium. Um, my family, born and we were all born and bred in Kalgoorlie, been there for four generations. So we, we knew where a few deposits were. No one was really looking for it. Um, and so we developed that lithium project. I think with, uh, with any commodity that you want to go into, you know, one, you try to pick the, a thematic and a long-term thematic. Two, that'll identify some commodities and then try to get the better assets uh, in those commodities and, and, and get there early. And uh, because sometimes you have to hold them through a cycle, you know, it took us two cycles to get Mount Marion developed. Um, you know, I guess that's what a long, a long period in mining uh, teaches you. There's been tremendous investment in uh, EV recycling. I think of uh, Lifecycle. Uh, they announced a $100 million investment uh, this spring from Coke. Uh, Redwood Materials, uh, they've raised $700 million a year ago. Yeah. Uh, why the big investments? Um, I, I just try to understand the timing, Chris. I mean, 
we're still at yeah. the start of energy transition right now. Uh, we're the cars, electric cars are getting there, but um, we're not going to see any real scale, I guess, for a couple of years out. Yeah, I think that's where there's probably some some sort of misconception. So, you know, we've had EVs, Elon's been making EVs for a while. Um, and I think we start with the fact that in a typical gigafactory, you know, we model our 50 ton plants of taking the production scrap. So offcuts, uh, failed cells, failed packs from the QAQC process. Um, and that's what feeds the small plants. And then Redwood did that big raise for a 500 ton a day plant. Now, uh, Redwood and us, we have the same size sort of plants because we've designed them off, you know, Elon's 35 gigawatt hour Nevada gigafactory. Um, and obviously Redwood's founded by uh, JB, who used to be Elon's offsider. So the production scrap, you'd be amazed that, that so as we're as the car makers are transitioning to making all more EVs, the cell makers have to make the cells first. So, you know, um, China was obviously first. They've won the race. Europe second in terms of building out its battery capacity. The US uh, a couple of years behind Europe, but will accelerate very quickly. Uh, when I say US, North America, uh, will quickly accelerate and bypass Europe, you know, maybe later in the decade. And as these guys scale up, you know, they're apart from uh, Tesla, they're first generation EV makers. So you, you've seen that there's been recalls, predominantly driven by the battery makers. And the battery makers have never made cells in these at these volumes. Um, you know, that gigafactory in Nevada was originally bigger than all of Panasonic's Japanese plants put together. And it took Panasonic five years to get the scrap rate below 20%, you know, and they are one of the top cell makers in the world. And different cell makers have had different success in ramping up and we've had recalls and stuff like that. So believe me, there is adequate uh, supply from production scrap. Now, Lysicle and Redwood are, uh, are competing with each other and and you know have raised lots of money and ha and having a very aggressive rollout. You don't have the level of regulation in the in North America than you have in the US. So in Europe, they will need the hydromet recycling to get the recycling efficiencies up. When you you know typically in the US, there's too much there's too much shredding capacity to make black mass, which is an intermediate like a concentrate and not enough refining capacity as, as it stands. Um, in Europe, it's the other way around. You know, so in 2025, we think the market's probably 250,000 tonnes of, of, of production scrap and some end of life and some warranty. Um, and the total installed capacity in Europe as it stands today is about 70,000 tonnes. So in different parts of, uh, of the world, there's over and under capacity. Now, is Neo Metals looking at these other looking at these other companies? I'm just trying to understand the niche. Is it? Uh, yep. Do you have more of a European focus, and are you doing more partnerships as opposed to a build out? Or it, 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 help me out. Yeah, look, I think you know, f for us, when we when we went through a partner selection process and you know picked out our business strategy, we weren't worried about the feedstock supplies over the long term. And, and I agree, like the, the large end of life volumes don't come start to come back in towards the end of this decade, right? It's really a 2030 and a 2040 decade proposition. At, at the end of 2030, we might be able to recycle 10% of what's needed for new production. And I think in 2040, we're probably about half of what's needed. So, um, yeah, it's... it's um, definitely um, needed by the market. We have flexible business models. So we, you know, Redwood and, and Lysical want to do it themselves. They, 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 they want the batteries, they want the cells, they want to sell black mass and then they want to integrate. And, uh, and that's the most risk, the most reward. For us, um, you know, we, we're happy to enter into joint ventures like we've licensed with a buy-in option with Steel Company of Canada. Um, we will do plant supply and licensing. 
Um, like we get for Mercedes, it's uh, royalty free for the first 10 ton a day integrated operation that we're going to put at Kuppenheim. But for any other volumes and, and pl- new direct, you know, pl- custom made plants, um, they'll have to pay us a royalty. So I think it's in our more flexible business models. I mean, we, you know, without giving too much away, you know, we, we are more, and we've been in the industry for a long time. We, we need to sit down with our customers and work out what they want in the long run, what their needs are. And, and certainly as car makers, you know, um, I, I would say they're probably not as friendly generally to deal with as the consumer electronics guys were because lithium, the batteries are much, much larger part of their end product. So they can't be as nice, but you know, we have to deliver them a lower total cost of ownership over uh, total cost of recycling um, over time. And like I said earlier, we weren't worried about supply. We were worried about who can build the plants uh, at the scale needed in a timely fashion. And so that's why we partnered with a 150 year old German plant builder. Why is vanadium in the mix for EVs, Chris? Look, the uh, lithium vanadium uh, combination gives a higher specific energy density, right? So highest range in smallest format. Um, it's just chemical, right? So as, as far as lithium iron batteries go, that's that's the sort of uh, that's the apogee. Uh, we've got an investment. You know, we've we've had our vanadium uh, tested by lithium vanadium oxide cathode manufacturers and cell makers. Uh, and we've chosen to make uh, an investment in uh, in TIFAST, which is a lithium vanadium anode uh, developer that came out of the University of California in San Diego. And, you know, the benefit there, you know, they're looking at 20,000 cycles, three minutes to charge up to 80% and uh, the highest theoretical energy density, right? So it's pretty hard to to look past. And, and there are attributes that all the car customers are going to want. You're going to want fast charging, like 20,000 cycles for daily use. Um, yeah, it's 50-odd years, right? And you're going to recharge it every day. So, you know, long-lasting batteries, fast charging batteries, lots of energy um, so that we can compete, you know, with the rev heads, um, it's the answer. Let's step back, Chris. Uh, there's a lot that is going on in the EV space. Uh, there's uh, the substitution with the uh, various type of chemistries talking about your vanadium that uh, you just mentioned. Uh, people are just trying to uh, do these things while they're reducing emissions. Uh, people are ramping up production. So there's been these huge investment by the automakers. We see People like Sabani Stillwater kind of going uh, downstream. Uh, there's direct lithium extraction technology. Uh, out of all of this, uh, Chris, what are you kind of keeping your eye on? What is uh, what's exciting yeah. there, or what is a uh, uh, what's what's the biggest news in the EV space? Yeah, look, I think if you have a look at the, you know, why we love the thematic, we know they're going to EVs. There's more cells. There's massive demand pull on the prices. And then you've still got the fact that the average mine takes seven years to develop and the average lithium brine deposit takes about seven years to develop too. You know, they're, they're tricky. They're hard. I can tell you from firsthand experience. So what you're saying is, you know, um, that battery supply chain being stretched, margins have been dislocated, different parts of the chain are making abnormal parts, uh, abnormal profits, as you can see from the spodumene and the brine guys at the moment. And look, that'll settle down in time. But, you know, under any circumstance, you know, under any scenario, we just can't see how supply can ramp up to meet and and feed all of the battery demand uh, in 2030. So for us, it's then, well, we've got to develop multiple points in that lithium ion supply chain. So, you know, we have our own lithium chloride electrolysis technology, which will bolt on beautifully to DLE. In fact, it will bolt on beautifully to conventional salar evaporation uh, brine deposits to really speed up uh, lithium. I mean, it's under we're under some sort of threat. If we don't have enough, they'll look for alternate batteries and we don't want them to do that. So, you know, the challenge to the industry is everyone's got to try to scale up. Now, high prices are, are helping that scale up, um, 
but technological advances are really um, what's needed to, to, to satisfy it. But I mean, um, it's hard not to be super excited if you're in that supply chain. Lastly, Chris, milestones over the next 12 months. Yeah, look, so for us on our commercial plant in Hilkenbach, uh, hitting capacity, um, entering into the plant supply agreements with Mercedes and Stelco in the December quarter, uh, and starting the construction of those facilities next year for the lithium ion battery uh, project. And then look, bringing more of our uh, pipeline into the light once we have binding agreements. I mean, the good thing about Mercedes was um, it was a very good catalyst for accelerating discussions in our pipeline. So that was great. Um, in terms for the vanadium project, you know, we're looking at development decisions in the next 12 months um, for our uh, ELI process or electrolytic lithium to convert lithium chloride to lithium hydroxide. Uh, we'll finish uh, a class three uh, study towards the end of the year. We're ordering the new pilot plant this quarter and we'll have that up and running in the first half of next year. And then we've only got one traditional mining asset other than our three technologies, which is the world's second highest grade hard rock titanium deposit. We're starting smelting trials up in China tonight, uh, trying to do exactly what they do, what Rio does at QIT, you know, uh, smelting hard rock titanium. So, you know, we, uh, you know, we're just super stoked with uh, the whole portfolio. Uh, Chris, good luck with it all. And uh, thanks for speaking with Kitco. Thank you very much, Michael. Have a great evening. He is Chris Reed. He's Managing Director and CEO of Neo Metals. My name is Michael McRae and you're watching Kitco Mining.